is Virginia Preta and I'm chairing the Young Pediatric Nephrologist Network in ESPN. I'm proud to announce that this year we launched a new initiative among our junior colleagues for World Kidney Day to raise awareness about kidney disease in childhood. We invite you to learn how our dynamic and hardworking colleagues are improving upon kidney disease burden and researching new therapies to manage chronic kidney disease. Enjoy watching, share and join us in making great things together, not only for our patients, but also for all children suffering from kidney disease worldwide. Hi, I'm Fabio Pagliadonga from Italy. I have the pleasure of helping Jenny in coordinating the ESPN Young Pediatric Nephrology Network. I'm really happy to support young people as they are key players in fighting pediatric kidney disorders. They have motivation, fresh ideas, enthusiasm, so let's hear their voices. Hello, I want to bridge the knowledge gap about the primary hyperoxaluria type 1. This is a rare devastating disease which results in kidney stone formation, nephrocalcinosis and kidney failure. The best outcomes to date were achieved with combined liver and kidney transplantation. Now we should think about this disease because timely and correct diagnosis may delay the progression of end-stage kidney disease and start treatment with lumasiran, which reduces the oxalite levels. In Bulgaria, for the past two years, we've diagnosed two children with primary hyperoxaluria type 1 and we have the chance to treat them with lumasiran. So now we can help children with orphan diseases to have normal lives. Never give up on them. Pediatric nephrology team from University Hospital Center in Zagreb is celebrating this year 40 years of the first kidney transplantation in children. We are very proud to stand on the achievements of our predecessors and to continue this important program which improved the lives of nearly 200 patients. In our center we also diagnose and treat other various kidney diseases. Moreover, we do our best to improve the quality of life of our patients and their families as well. Therefore. We are joining our colleagues from all over the Europe to send the message to children in Croatia and beyond that their kidneys are safe with us. Are my colleagues from Helsinki. Did you know that we have the youngest kidney transplant recipients in Europe? It's true, and this is because of the Finnish congenital nephrotic syndrome. The TNF is caused by a mutation in nephrin G. We call the typical Finnish mutations fin major and fin minor. We uh, typically treat the patients first with uh, nightly albumin infusions with fluorescent. Nowadays, many patients receive these at home. We tend to perform a renal transplantation when the children weigh about uh, 10 kilos and most of the uh, donors are living related. And by the way, we are the best, best team to treat these patients and our long time results are very, very Hi everyone, my name is Julie Bernardor, I'm pediatric nephrologist from France. After kidney transplantation, secondary hyperparathyroidism may persist and its management is a daily challenge for nephrologists. We reported a first case series on the off-label use of Sinac acid after pediatric kidney transplantation. Our data shown that the Sinac acid permits to control secondary hyperparathyroidism with acceptable tolerability. The off-label use of calcimetic in pediatrics should be Further assisted in future study, such like the use in infant less free is also. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the work in it. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are a group of uh, young Italian pediatric nephrologists and uh, we all follow up ADPKB children. We well know that hypertension is uh, one of the first signs of disease and uh, it can occur in childhood. If not treated, it can lead to secondary cardiovascular damage. So we suggest parents to check their children's blood pressure once a year, if always normal. Blood pressure measurement is simple, pain-free, and more useful than other exams, as kidney ultrasound and blood check. Greetings from Italy! <laughs> Hello everyone, greetings from Vilnius. Nocturnal enuresis or bedwetting is a common condition affecting up to 20% of 5 years olds and 1% of 15 years olds.
About 10% of children will see resolution of bedwetting each year with no treatment, but those who don't can face bullying and stigmatization resulting in low self-esteem. Our center specialists assess each case individually, first of all focusing on non-pharmacological treatment. Working together hand in hand, we can achieve good results. CKD might seem like a disease only found in adults, and that can be very isolating for pediatric patients and parents of patients alike. Even in this tiny country of Malta, of 500,000 people, we have 20 children with CKD, so you're not alone. Here we are a small team of just three doctors who look after these patients. We see you regularly, get to know you very well, and we're always easily contactable if any problems or issues arise along the way. Hi everyone, my name is Sander Groenendwoud from Rotblad UMC in the Netherlands. As young professionals in pediatric nephrology from a small country like the Netherlands, we believe that collaboration is key to improve the care for our patients. And a beautiful example is our SOFIA study, in which physicians from 36 hospitals throughout the country collaborated to create a cohort of over a thousand patients with solitary functioning kidney. Studying this cohort, will learn us a lot about the etiology and prognosis of patients with solitary functioning kidney and help us personalize care for these patients. As clinicians, I think we can take advantage of social media to engage everyone, from healthcare providers to policymakers, in our mission to promote kidney health and to put our patients first. Every day at work, I take care of critical ill children with renal involvement and I carry out clinical research in order to identify the best strategies to improve the outcome of our patients. As a doctor, I take care of children with chronic kidney diseases. And as a scientist, I try to better understand these diseases in order to find new treatment strategies that improve the quality of life of my patients. Welcome to Nephrology News. Everybody on the street is talking about granular tubular disorders in upcoming news, and we would like to give you some key points to take away for our daily life. Some tubulopathies share a clinical phenotype, making us really difficult to diagnose only with biochemical tests. So, nowadays, genetic tests are mandatory in renal tubular disorders. Not all primary tubulopathies are the same. Some of them require different diet advice to others, such as try to drink a lot of water, and, and uh, a lot of water, and a lot of water if you have uh, nephrogenic diabetes, and eat plenty of olives and salt if you have Aditamon syndrome. Don't forget that some benign tubulopathies, such as distal renal tubular acidosis, are not so innocent as they sound, and experts have advised us about their potential risk for CKD. As primary tubulopathies are genetic disorders, all relatives should be tested. Brothers, parents, and wife. And should attend community counseling. Finally, all this extraordinary knowledge is thankful to Renal Tooth Platform and some different Spanish visionaries like Professor Rodriguez Soriano, Tiscalis, Fernando Santos, Victor Garcia Nieto, and Gemariceta. And that's all, folks. Kidney diseases are common, harmful, and often treatable. Treat your kidneys right. How? Start by following a few golden rules. Keep it reactive. Check and control your blood sugar. Check and control your blood pressure. Take appropriate fluid intake. Don't smoke. Do don't take over the counter anti inflammatory painkiller pills regularly. As last for the Get your kidney function checked regularly. Kidney health for all! Nephrotic syndrome happens when the kidneys leak protein into the urine. This causes low protein in the blood, which causes swelling in the ankles, legs, face, and sometimes the knee. Nephrotic syndrome can lead to infections, kidney damage, and blood clots. Nine out of ten children with nephrotic syndrome can be treated with steroid medication. Steroid can make some children completely better, but in lots of children the nephrotic syndrome will come back at least once. Most children will get better again with more steroids. Some will need other medications to keep the nephrotic syndrome controlled. 
can find lots more information about nephrotic syndrome and other children's kidney diseases on www.infokid.org.uk. Sure.